Hello friends! Welcome back! My name is Ramon. How are you today? Today we are back to test yet another mineral sunscreen. That is a new Sunbum mineral sunscreen face tint SPF 30. And this actually got sent to me by someone on Instagram. They reached out, they're like, hey, I'm working on formulating a mineral sunscreen that's going to work for not only medium skin tone individuals, but hopefully work for deeper skin individuals as well. I've seen your sunscreen reviews and they are very thorough, so I'd like to kind of send samples along to you along the way to kind of get your feedback. But first, I want to send you some sunscreens to kind of gauge your thoughts on them because these are the ones I think I want to base my formulation around. Next thing you know, I have this. What's interesting about this is that it's an SPF 30 mineral based sunscreen, zinc oxide 2.4% and titanium dioxide 5.3% as the sole filters. It is tinted. Obviously, we're going to see that in a second, what that looks like. It's also claiming broad spectrum UVA and UVB protection, as well as being water resistant for 40 minutes. But beyond that, this is also claiming to be a really great primer for makeup. And so what I'm getting at that is it probably is going to have a dimethicone based texture. I wonder what that tint's going to look like, though, because we've seen other sunscreens like the Sarabi and the First Aid Beauty that say they're going to work great on the skin and go great on your makeup, but they in themselves are basically a makeup based product with how they're tinted. So I'm interested to see how this is going to work out. Beyond that, online claims are not really saying a lot besides what I just told you. Broad spectrum, zinc oxide, tinted, glides on like butter, has a sheer payoff, blends beautifully into all skin tones, and is going to be a great hammer for makeup. This is 50 mil. This cost $17.99 on Ulta's website and $17.99 on some bums website itself. So uh, it's pretty medium tier. Packaging makes it look bigger than it is. It's only 50 mil. And this also claims that it's going to leave a matte finish on the skin. So overall, it seems it's going to be really great for oily skin individuals. It seems it's going to be great for makeup wears, like myself. And they're claiming it's going to be sheer work for all skin tones. So we're going to test that out. Before we get into it, I'm going to ask that you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you know when I post more sunscreen, skincare, and fancy related content. Give this video a thumbs up if you like my mineral sunscreen reviews. And down below, how to use this. Because when they first told me about this, I tried looking for it and it was not the easiest to find. But does anyone's holy grail? Let me know. Do you like any other sun bump sunscreens? Let me know. I know they're very, very accessible because you can get them at Target. Walmart, a lot of other chain retailers like that. So that in itself is a positive. So as with all of my mineral sunscreen reviews, we're going to be testing the sunscreen over four different days, changing the variables of skincare underneath and the variable of makeup on top of them to see overall how this is going to pair with both of those factors. And on top of that, we're going to be using my four B's mineral sunscreen rubric. That's going to be beard, beading, beat, brown skin friendly. Beard. How is it going to play in the beard, mustache, hairline, eyebrow situation? Is it going to be easy to work in or is it going to leave those like really bad casts and lines? Beading. How is it going to work with skincare underneath it? I do change up the variable from very, very simple hydrators to a full skincare routine underneath. Beats. How does it play with makeup? How does it prep the skin for makeup? How does makeup apply on top of it? And then how does it affect the overall wear of makeup throughout the day? And then lastly, brown skin friendly. Is it brown skin friendly? Is it going to leave a cast? And if so, or if not, to what degree? So next time you see me, it's going to be at the end of day four, giving my final thoughts after the wear test on the Sunbum Mineral SPF 30 Tinted Face Lotion. So here we are at the end of day four. This is me after reapplication and yeah, some thoughts. So looking back and going over what I did for the last four days, again, the metric for each day, I applied a quarter teaspoon of this on my face, my ears, and my neck, rubbed it in, worked it in for a couple minutes, and let it set for at least five minutes before I went in and did whatever else on top, just to be able to let it set down and be able to let it form its protective layer. Going back over each day, day one was light skincare, light makeup. That was my first time playing with this. And as you can see on the footage, I opened it, put some into my little quarter teaspoon, and I was a little bit like off put by the tint of this. I was like, oh no, it's Cerave 2.0. Again, like I cannot have this. You can see I applied it to half of my face and working it in, I was actually kind of surprised at the texture of this. It feels really moussey, really lightweight, kind of dimethicone, not to the severity of the super group sunscreen, but it does have that texture. And then after five minutes, I let it set and you can see what it looks like on one half of my face versus one half without the sunscreen. So I went in and applied the other half, put that side down, I went in with a light makeup application and Makeup went on top of this really, really nicely. No weird texture issues, generally happy. I wasn't sure about the cast at that point though. Day two was full, full skincare routine. I'm talking layers of hydrators, serums, moisturizers, creams, this on top. Again, this is a very nicely like silicone, dimethicone rich uh, formulation. It's very emollient, but it's not too emollient in the sense that it's too moisturizing, but this glides like butter over everything. Usually when I do full skincare underneath mineral sunscreen, that's a real testament of how it's going to work. Sometimes they put in a little bit more elbow grease to work it in. Sometimes they have a little bit more issues and I'm actually like, tucking at my face. This, no. Glide it on like butter, super easy. Set down really nicely after five minutes. Went out with makeup on top of this, applied beautifully. No issues with texture, no pilling, nothing I can buff and everything. 
no problem. Day three was light skincare, full beat. Talking full coverage foundation, concealer, contour, all that stuff. Again, this set down nicely to form a really, really nice layer. This is pretty much like a pore blurring primer. It helps to control your shine, control your oil. Makeup, I could swipe, I could buff on top of this. There was no issues with makeup moving, no pilling. Nine hours plus into the wear test, my boyfriend was like, you haven't touched up at all? Like you haven't reapplied or anything? And I was like, no, this is the makeup. It looked airbrushed, it looked flawless. The makeup wore for nine plus hours beautifully. No breakup. My skin looked really, really good. And no matter if it was sheer foundation or full coverage foundation, there was no discoloration of the foundation due to the tint of the sunscreen. And then today, here we are at day four. No makeup, only the sunscreen just to see how it looks on bare skin, but not only that, to see how it reapplies on top of itself. As you can see, here we are about roughly 10 minutes after reapplication and eh. So let's talk and review my four Bs and I'll kind of break things down and give you my final thoughts on everything. First B, beard. This, as nice and elegant as it is on the skin, does get caught in the beard. I'm gonna be honest with that. Whenever I do applications afterwards, I'll go into my living room in natural light and my boyfriend will look at me and he'll tell me what his assessment of the sunscreen is. And he said that this was the least white cast he's seen on me with a mineral sunscreen or at least cast period, but it is still very apparent in the hairline. And even after the application, now looking closely, it's definitely my mustache. It's in my beard. It's in my hairline. I can see a very distinct line. As much as I went and worked this in and rubbed it in, it doesn't disappear in the beard as nicely as it does on the skin, so. But that being said, this is a lot more pleasant than like a straight purple cast in my beard and my hairline, so. Beading, how it works with other skincare. Again, due to the texture of this, the formulation of this, the components of the formulation, this glides on top of everything beautifully seamlessly. And I mentioned it's kind of this weird mixture between being moussey and being kind of dimethicone -y. It's still really elegant though, but if you don't like dimethicone textures, if you don't like the super goop texture, this might be a little bit off-putting. That being said, it sets down so nicely. It doesn't feel emollient or greasy on my skin. I feel the texture on my fingers, but it doesn't feel greasy, especially on my ears where it's usually an issue. The factors in this and some of the things that I didn't touch on in the beginning because it wasn't called out necessarily in the product description, it features ingredients like evening primrose oil, cucumber plant extract, linseed oil, and rosehip oil. And basically those function all together as forms of like antioxidants, emollients, moisturizing factors. So on my oily dehydrated skin here in the summer with some hydrated underneath it, this actually functions in itself to take that moisturizer sunscreen roll nicely. If you have drier skin, I would pair this up with other creams underneath it, but as my tests show, this doesn't work badly with creams. It actually goes on nicely on top of them. Now, beat how it works with makeup. Again, this, first and foremost, is a sunscreen, but like close second, it's a great primer. This, look at my skin now. I am a little bit toned up. I'm not gonna lie. This is leaving a little bit of a cast, but my skin looks airbrushed. What pores, what texture, what shine. Like this keeps my skin really nice, natural, matte. It's not too mattifying where I look dry and crusty. It allows makeup to go on top of it beautifully, really allows the makeup to wear nicely on top of the face for hours and hours. I don't get really shiny and greasy, no weird breakup or creasing. What I will say though, is if you have more dry skin, this might accentuate some dry patches, but makeup applies beautifully on top of this, hands down. I was genuinely shocked by this. This is the best mineral sunscreen I've worn so far with makeup, period. Even my boyfriend was like, you look really good. This has been nine hours. So I was like, <laughs> and then last but not least, brown skin friendly. If you're my kind of brown, yes. If not, you might be a little, it's iffy. And here's the deal. I tried to find other reviews of the sunscreen from other people. Thankfully, my good friend Raw Tin Skin on YouTube actually did a review of this. He loved this hands down, but he's only, he's about my skin color, maybe a shade or two darker. There's no one I could find with a very rich, deep skin tone that reviewed this. And therefore I can't make claims that it's going to work beautifully for deeper skin tones. But what I will say is on me, Fenty 290, this gave me a slight tone up. It was not completely translucent. It did not completely sink into my skin without leaving a trace. Therefore, my assumption, what I'm gonna go off of is that on deeper skin tones, this might leave a small cast, might leave a tone up effect. But that being said, again, this has been the most elegant texture, the most elegant formulation, the least casty sunscreen I've used so far. So I'm actually hopeful. I'm excited to see if any deeper skin tones have used this. If you've seen someone leave a review with deeper skin, leave that down below. I'd really like to see that. And also I'd like other people to be able to access that information as well. And again, this looks opaque at first upon application, but give it five to 10 minutes, it does 
does sink in really nicely. That's what I saw in Rotten Skin's video was he was putting it on. He was like, oh, this is, ugh. And then he left it for like five minutes and he came back. He was like, yo, like it's gone. And after replying, he's like, this is still a really, really nice color, nice texture on my skin. As I told you, someone sent this to me because they are formulating sunscreen and they wanted to get my opinion on my thoughts on this because this is what they wanted to base their formulation off of. What I will say is, as you can see, the tints, even though it's not opaque and it's not as BB cream texture like the Sarabi, like the First Aid Beauty, this works in nicely similar to the Inky List sunscreen. This tint is still close to my natural skin color. I work it in, it disappears kind of because it's close to my skin color. What I will tell the person is that you're gonna to need to formulate a deeper tint for deeper skin individuals to have this more appropriate for those skin tones. You can't just settle for this one. This is gonna cover a good maybe 60% of skin tones. You're still leaving out an entire 40%. That's way too many people. Well, that's what I will give as my response to that. But the texture, I love it. If you're, if you're a deeper skin individual and you are makeup regardless, I actually would heavily consider this sunscreen. Beautiful for makeup application. So my final thoughts on this. Is this Ramon recommended? I'm gonna say yes. I'm gonna say yes with specific caveats. Does it leave a little bit of tone up on me? Will it leave a little bit more of a substantial cast on deeper skin? I'm going to be very transparent and say yes to both of those. Was it a little bit difficult to work in my beard? Is it a little bit more apparent than my hairline? Yes. That being said, this is actually semi-affordable. It's really accessible. Again, you can probably find this at Target really easily, at Ulta, online on Amazon. It's only $17 for about 50 mil, which is not the most expensive I've used. It's not the cheapest I've used either. I recommend a lot of really affordable sunscreens on this channel, but you can easily get it. That's something you have to order online necessarily. Considering all the duds, all the fails I've reviewed on this channel for this Brown Skin Friendly Sunscreen series, this actually has more pros than cons. The one con I can think of is just the tint. That's really it. Everything else about this, the texture, the cost, the experience using it were really, really positive. And that's why I'm gonna say this is Ramon recommended for sure. Especially for me being oily skin, how this wore and kept my skin really matte and really airbrushed, how makeup wore on top of it. This is actually going to be more of a staple for me definitely for summer. Even my boyfriend was like, I'm going to prime with this for sure. And it's water resistant for 40 minutes. So it's going to be really useful for really high humidity, high heat days like here in Chicago where I'm going to be sweaty, but I want to look good with makeup on and I want to stay non-shiny. So yeah. If you found this review useful, let me know. Comment down below what your thoughts on this was, if you used it, what your experiences were. Give this video a thumbs up and do not forget, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you know when I post more sunscreen related content. Thanks for watching guys, bye.